one of the top teams in the world. They have the lead. But how about this? Two American teams in the top three. Hinsman and Karchum ahead of Inouye and Baldwin. Okay, let's close this deal, guys. Let's do this. Can you take the water bottle off? We're going to the And we get underway with one of the American teams. They have really made a major move here in Atlantic City. Marcy Hinsman and Aaron Parcham in second place and less than five points off the lead of the Chinese team. Don't forget when Marcy comes down out of the air on the throws, she's landing with seven to ten times her body weight, and look at how strong she is with that lower back. did not make the world championship team last year they won the bronze medal at the u.s nationals but there were only two spots available and this is their senior grand prix debut quite a debut so far
one of the most difficult things to do in pair skating is to have the stamina. <laughs> hey, Marcy! That you need to get through the program, and they had more than that. They were very solid, finished with a lot of speed. A great skate for them. The parents in the crowd going nuts, and the rest of the crowd here, too. Johnny Johns, their coach, you heard him. What happened to the demise of American pair skating? That's all we've heard for the last four or five years. But here's a team, they come together, they make their senior Grand Prix debut. They've been terrific, and remember, they started the free skate in second place. They can win the gold medal. Marcy Hinsman, who's from Columbus, Ohio, and Aaron Parcham, who's from Oak Park, Illinois, the Chicago area. A very solid performance for them. And again, I want to emphasize just how hard this is to maintain that kind of quality through the performance. This is the opening split twist. Now, watch how many rotations she performs. There's the one, two, three. The problem is there's a little bit of a collision there, and that needs to be avoided. You need to set your partner down without any collision. But this is great. She has great technique. Her feet close together, fast rotation, and a nice, solid back. You have to have that strength to land those big throws like that. Very nice throughout. And again, his timing has got to be perfect, and Aaron has that mastered. He throws Marcy at the perfect angle as she goes through the air with three perfect rotations. And look how excellent her shoulders are lined up with her hips. Everything is exactly where it should be to have success on a throw like that. And this is hard because she's backwards to him. It's a reverse overhead. And it's very hard to do. It's one of the most difficult lifts in pair skating to perform. Very solid. So how about the start for the Americans here? Terry Gannon, along with uh, Olympic <laughs> silver medalist Peter Carruthers. You're excited about I, this. I'm thing. loving it, man. Yeah. It's, it's, you it's, got two American teams who uh, head to the free skating in the top three. Great performance there. But also, this could be a groundbreaking day overall in pair skating. Yeah, it certainly could be. You know, everybody knows that pair skating is dangerous. We saw that last year with yeah. Miana and Marina when they had that horrible fall here at Skate America. But it's also very exciting, you know, the dynamic throws, lifts, and death spirals. But what we could see is some skating history tonight. Yeah, in terms of throws, uh, maybe a uh, throw triple axle from yes. the other American team. And uh, quad involved here too. So we'll uh, stick around. Make sure you stick around and watch. We could see some history. Marcy Hinsman, Aaron Parcham. Here are the marks now. 48.74, the technical marks. 50.56 for the program components, or 99.30. Here in the free skate, and overall 154.30. And uh, for the free skate, by far, that is a personal best. That is a great performance for Hinsman and Parcham. So we roll on with Smart One Skate America here in Atlantic City. And as you know, if you're a figure skating fan, you tune in to watch this sport for many reasons. For the beauty, for the grace, for the athleticism, and also the style. But it can also be a very dangerous sport at times. One such moment took place a little more than a year ago at this event in Pittsburgh. Tatiana Topmianina and Maxine Marinin experiencing what would be a frightening fall, and it's an image that is still very fresh. He says she's basically 99% healthy now. Oh, there's a gun! Oh, oh, gosh! Oh. It used to be a figure skating, like a beautiful story <laughs> about princess on the ice, but, you know, people so dangerous. It was, I think, a bad lesson for everybody. After their fall, Tatiana and Max each battled their own demons. Tatiana had to physically recover from a severe concussion, while Max suffered from the emotional guilt of dropping his partner. But if they ever needed to prove their resilience, they did so last March. That may be as courageous a performance as you will ever see. Two brave people that end this season in triumph. What a comeback. I think every gold medal is special. Nobody believes what we will come back and skate again, but we start to believe in ourselves again. We still can compete, still can win. Doesn't matter what, what's happened with us, uh, good things or bad things, we are the team, so we are together and we have to continue to work. 
and that's why I think uh, make us strong as a team. This year, they're using the lessons from that fall to better prepare for the season ahead. The two-time world champions have only one goal, to add an Olympic title to their legacy. First, we have to be healthy, and to win Olympic Games, we have to be born for this. That's kind of destiny. <laughs> yeah. They win it going away by about 15, or less than 15 points, but uh, just a terrific finish for Inouye and Baldwin. They Very tight indeed. The top Canadian, Christopher Maybe, back in 11th place. And he's on the ice right now. Chris Maybe from Tilsonburg, Ontario. This is his first senior international competition, his first Grand Prix event. And he comes into this free skate after a disastrous short program in which he fell three times. He's got to get that out of his head right now. Well, every time you debut on the senior circuit, you want to take something away, you want to learn something, you want to become a, a way a wiser, brighter, better skater. And this is a hurdle that he has to learn to get past, and here's his opportunity to do that. Skating to a medley of songs from the Swing Kids movie. Opening jump, triple loop. And turns it into a double. Pops that too. Well, there's another thing he has to learn. You can't come out at a competition of this caliber and open with a double loop single axle. Some difficulty on the triple flip double toe combination. And the mistake he made on those opening two jumps, the critical thing is that they weren't rotated. This new scoring system just absolutely gives you no points when you under-rotate a jump. The key thing for a skater is to make sure you turn the jump. Even if you fall, make it go around three times. Really worked hard on his presentation coming into this season. Moving to David Wilson, Laurie Nickel, working on just holding even the simplest movements. Well, you can see it. This program is very effective, works really well for him. He just needs to learn to nail the jumps as well, and it'll be all there. There he goes. Oh, and he gets stuck on the landing of the second triple, but he landed a nice triple lutz there. Found his knees on that one. Triple flip. Doug Lee, his coach, said something to him as he went by there along the boards. Whatever he said, it works. There's the second triple lot.
great recovery after a shaky start. Chris Mabey's senior international debut here at Skate America. Well, that's a great program for him. His personality really shines through. And I think once he gets his feet wet here in international competition and gets the jumps done, this program will take him a long way. Here's a look at the triple flip. He does a little turn in between it and the next jump, the double toe. And this was one of the jumps he did do very well. Triple Lutz jump. And as you mentioned, Barb, he'll come away from this feeling much better with a much more solid skate here than he had in the short program. And when he pulls it all together, it will work well for him. Canada will have three spots in Torino because of Jeff Buttle's silver at the Worlds and Emmanuel Sandu's seventh. You have to wonder, is Chris maybe ready to make the leap and be in that third spot for Canada? And that's a good indication. 104.60, a new personal best for Chris Maybe, and it puts him into second place overall in this competition. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Atlantic City. You're awesome. Still to come, jumping Brian Joubert of France in the men's final flight of the free skate. This is a spot open, hopefully for me. Um, I've been training really well, and uh, I'm just going to go back after this competition and continue to train how I hit. How I have been, and um, I think I'm just going to work hard. There's so many good men. There's so many men that deserve to go, and nationals is going to be so intense, and it's just going to come down to who can handle it and who can put out the best skates. So the best man will go, or the best three men will go. Indeed, they will. Final flight warming up, and there's the leader after the short program. Well, Takahashi is our leader, but as we saw on the leaderboard coming into this, it's very close to the top, and he's going to have to skate to maintain that lead. Brian Joubert looking to find some momentum after some disappointing results last season and a very disappointing sixth place finish at the World Championships. And Olympic years have been good to Kevin Vanderpair and he burst onto the scene in Salt Lake City and I'm sure he's looking to do the same thing with this season. Big pressure and expectations on Evan Lysacek, who was the surprise bronze medalist at last year's World Championships, going into an Olympic year. That is a huge Stay amount program, of pressure right? for him. Stay with the program. Keep your energy level right to the last drop. For the last beat of the music, keep the energy going. That's what this program has. It has great energy. Okay. You look great in Words of encouragement from coach Frank Carroll. And Evan Lysacek is set to go. The bronze medalist from the World Championships in Moscow, third after the short program. Sign of an experienced coach. Frank's encouraging his skater not to pay attention to any one thing, but to try and deliver a program, deliver a performance, and make some energy happen in this building. Setting up for a triple up, triple toe combination. Perfect. Next is triple axle combination. Little low on the landing, but clean. energy Frank Carroll was talking about. After winning the bronze medal at the World Championships in Moscow, Lysacek has admitted that he is feeling the pressure of the high expectations in this country going into the Olympic year. Another triple axel schedule here. I'd like to see some more speed. 
Even without it, he still squeaks out the landing. He's reading a book right now called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. It's one of those health help books to try to deal with the pressure. He writes little messages on his hands. Before competitions, he wrote the word attack before this one. Wish to have been a triple lutz. He turns it into a single. And I don't know that this little ditty of a program is what you want to be doing for an Olympic year. It'd be great for a show environment, but in this particular forum, I'm sitting here thinking, how does this play in Torino? And I don't think it plays at all. somewhat surprised that Frank Carroll would endorse this particular program. I mean, he's been around since 1980 when Linda Fradiani won an Olympic medal in, in Lake Placid, and this to me is not an Olympic year program. I felt that time there were moments that were good, and certainly he had a, a good success with most of the jumps. Here was the triple lutz combination off the top, which was very nice, but there were other moments in the prog program where I didn't even feel he was connected to the music at all. Here's a look at the triple axle. Squeaks it out, but as you mentioned, when you're going in as the world bronze medalist to the Olympic Games, this is not the vehicle you want to take. Now, some observers are saying that that pressure he's under, you can see it in his face and his body language, and I think we saw it there today. Now the scores for Evan Lysacek of the United States. And in the free skate total, 125.96. Not his best, but enough right now to put him into first place. But still, some big rivals to skate here at Skate America. Kevin Vanderperen from Belgium, second after the short program. This young man is known for his athletic ability. In fact, he had the highest score for technical elements in the free skate at the World Championships in Moscow. And he's renowned for his very difficult triple 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 combinations he landed his first ever quad here in the short program and he will plan to attempt it again first up up for the 
quad now. Oh, misses his toe and gets no lift. He also looked very cautious and tentative going into it. You have to attack a quad. It's like you just can't throw the anchor out. You have to go after it. Triple axle, triple toe. Kevin's become known for his triple, triple, triple combinations. Triple flip. Triple toe, triple loop. And that combination has a base mark of 14.5, which is the highest scoring element. Kevin won a silver medal at the 2002 Junior World Championships, becoming the first male skater from Belgium to win an ISU championship medal since 1947. He will be the only skater going to the Olympics for his country. that often gives him problems. And he singles it. on to the landing of that triple sow cow. Perhaps some fatigue creeping into this performance at this point. Kevin Vanderperen, exhausted after his free skate here in Atlantic City. And that look says that he's not sure it's enough to put him on top of the podium. The program really didn't ever get out of the blocks. He opened by singling his quad. He came back a couple of times. Here was the triple axle combination, which he did very well. But overall, I felt the program looked sluggish. And it's the type of program where you really have to take it over the top for it to be effective. And I didn't see much sellout here during the course of the performance today. There's no doubt, as you watch him in slow motion do this triple, triple, triple combination, that he has the technical ability. He just needs to get a little bit more consistent with it and take this program to the next level. 
Kevin Vanderperen was in second place after the short program. The podium right there for the taking. But I don't know. 55-10 for technical elements. And his program component, 61.20. This is well below what he scored in Moscow when he set a personal best of 133.51. He's second overall and in jeopardy of not being on the podium. When we come back, the leader after the short program, Daisuke Takahashi. Up next, Daisuke Takahashi, the leader after the short program, seeking to become the first Japanese male to win at Skate America. A lot of pressure on this young man as Japan will send just one male skater to Torino and they will base their de decision heavily on what happens in this Grand Prix series. He is favored by the Japanese Federation, a big jumper, but wildly inconsistent. up for his opening quad. Although he was unsuccessful, you could tell that that jump was going to rotate. He went into it with speed, he went into it with determination, he went into it with aggression, and that's what you have to do. Very difficult combination here. Triple axel, triple toe. Triple, triple combination, triple left, triple toe. Takahashi was 15th at the World Championships in Moscow and the only Japanese man after Takeshi Honda withdrew with an ankle injury. That means that Japan will have just one berth in the men's competition at Torino. Doubles. making a concerted effort to keep the speed and flow throughout this program. Shaky on that spin. 
spent the summer training in the United States with Nikolai Morozov and said he came away feeling a lot stronger physically. The man to beat, Daisuke Takahashi. First after the short program, he will be first after this free skate for sure. Can he be the first Japanese man to win the gold here at Skate America with one to come? Well, so nice to see because he struggled so often in the past with the mental aspect of this sport. Often he could just be brilliant and disappointing in the same competition, but he nailed this. Here's the triple axle which was beautiful, goes straight back up into the triple toe loop. He was just so sure of himself, so confident, and skated with great passion and emotion. Another combination, triple, triple once again. If I have to question one decision, it would be maybe, why did he not include yet a third combination? The men are allowed three, it's an opportunity to pick up even more points, but when you score that high technically, there's not many left to pick up. That's outstanding to score 76.14. And look at these numbers, 149.44, a huge new personal best for Daisuke Takahashi. That's gonna be tough to beat as he moves into first place overall. Still to come, Brian Joubert of France, the last to skate at Skate America. The last skater in the men's free program is the defending champion at Skate America, Brian Joubert of France. Two years ago, he was on the climb. He won the European Championships, the first Frenchman to do that in 40 years. Then he won the silver at the World Championships last year poised to go to the top of the podium in moscow he was 13th in the free skate and fell all the way to sixth and this year he's on the rebound well with the brilliant performance of takahashi for shubert to catch him he's going to have to be flawless and then some he will need this opening quad right here. No, not in any position to land that jump. Bear trying to come from fourth place after the short. Maybe it's going to get better, but at this point in time in this program, there is no correlation between what he's doing and the music that's playing. You have to wonder what's going through his mind. He's changed coaches in each of the last three years. He's getting all kinds of interference from the French Federation in this Olympic season. So many people telling him what to do.
The sport of figure skating has definitely gone through a form of evolution with this new scoring system. And it's pretty evident that you have to adapt and change or you're going to get left behind. I think we're looking at a situation where this skater has yet to shift gears, has yet to adapt, has yet to evolve because I remember vividly watching him in Dortmund at the World Championships and he tore the house down with his performance and you thought, boy, give this young man another two years of maturity, sophistication, choreographic development, he's going to be a force to reckon with. Well, guess what? Technically, he slipped and the other half of his skating has changed or improved at all. That is not a resounding endorsement. <laughs> no, I, I'm really disappointed because, as I said, two years ago in Dortmund, he looked like he was ready to just blow the doors off the world of men's skating. And here we are, less than four months before the Olympic Games, and this is not any kind of force at all. Many people were saying back in Dortmund, he looked like another Elvis Stoiko. He's all about his jumps, and when they're not working, it's trouble. Here are the scores now for Brian Joubert. And the technical elements mark is a full 16 points below what Takahashi scored. And so this free skate will not be enough. 20 points below Joubert's personal best. And good enough right now for third place. It will put him on the podium, but he will not successfully defend his gold medal. And so let's check the final standings in the men's competition. Daisuke Takahashi, the first Japanese male to win at Skate America. Evan Lysacek of the U.S. gets the silver. Joubert the bronze. And Christopher Maybe in his senior debut, a respectable ninth. But for Evan Lysacek, today he was able to shed the enormous expectations and pressure. Uh, I felt a lot of pressure just this season to kind of exceed the, um, the performances I gave last year. But I think that when I just tried to relax today and go out and have fun, um, you know, I did the best and the audience appreciated it. And I really was relaxed. And my coach, Frank Carroll, told me to stay with the program the whole time, no matter what happens. And I've, I've trained the jumps. Um, so all I could really control tonight was how well I, I um, performed the program. And this was only my third Grand Prix event, so I'm happy to come away with a medal. And we'll begin with Canada's Elizabeth Putnam and Sean Wirtz. Had a tough year last season, a lot of disappointment. They were fourth at the Canadian Championships, have twice won bronze medals at that event, and have come back here to unveil their Olympic program on the road to Torino. Well, this team's definitely taken a plunge in that they've changed coaches in an Olympic year. Usually you like to be in a very settled environment when you move into that Olympic year, but they've left Artur Dmitriev and now training with Peter Chernyshev. And I think you'll see his hand in the choreography of this program. <laughs> double twist. Many teams are opting to do a very nice double twist because they score just as many points as a not so well done triple twist. Nice exit on that overhead lift. Setting up here for a side by side Triple Lutzes, and they double.
by side triple foul cows here. Yes. Well done and an excellent unison. Another throw, throw triple south cow, just as good as the throw triple loop. They're really in the moment, aren't they? Great use of the music through this side-by-side -side step sequence. A big cheer goes up for Elizabeth Putnam and Sean Wirtz of Canada. Well, it's obvious this team has done their homework this season. The changes are really working for them. They've improved their speed. They've improved their technique. They're confident. I just can't get over the difference in this team. Throughout the program, some quality content. Here was the double watts, which was turned into a sequence. Double axle on the end. And this throw, the throw triple loop, was one of the two throws that they did very, very well. And it's worth noting there's a subtle little change this year. The pair of teams like the single skaters can pick up bonus marks for doing difficult elements in the back half of the program. Both of their throws received those bonus marks. Putnam and Wirtz have been together now for three years. They're trying to come from seventh place after the short program. The marks for their free skate. A total of 107.22. That is a new yeah. personal best. So they open their season at Skate America with a personal best in the free skate and move into first place overall. A nice start to the season with a new look and a new program. Yeah, we've made a lot of changes, and I think we owe a lot of our improvement to Peter, who we've started working with, and he also did the programs for us. And uh, I think we've been waiting a little while for that <laughs> kind of a performance. That's the the Liz and Sean that we've come to know and that uh, chemistry and spark mm -hmm. that we love to have. We definitely had that out there tonight, tonight yeah. and it was just so much fun. 